You, you muted, Ted. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry for the uh, delay. We had some technical difficulties that staff were able to get straightened out. So we're all set to go. <clears throat> so I'd like to call the meeting to order and uh, begin with a, uh, um, a motion that uh, the Committee of the Whole Agenda for March 13th, 2024 be approved. I need a mover and a seconder. Deputy Mayor Norris and Councillor LaChapelle, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Disclosure of interest. Are there any declarations at this point? Seeing none, as we move through the agenda, should you recognize an interest, please state the general nature thereof and fill out the required paperwork with our clerk as soon as you're able to following today's meeting. Before I get on to presentations uh, and delegations, uh, a couple of new faces uh, on your screen today that uh, at least they were on the screen today. Uh, we have Emily, uh, Emily King, our bylaw enforcement officer. Welcome, Emily. We're happy to have you. And um, we also have Emily, faithful. Uh, she well, there she is. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, faithful. Rebecca, welcome to Tate Township, and uh, we're happy to have you as well. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to presentations and delegations. And we have a, a delegation today from Tony Pickett uh, from the Georgian Bay Spiring Geopark. Um, Mr. Pickett, welcome. Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes for your presentation. That doesn't include any time council may have or staff may have following your presentations for questions. So uh, welcome and the floor is yours. Many thanks, uh, Mayor Walker, and to councillors. Um, I appreciate, or we all appreciate, the opportunity to share an update on our progress with the Geopark. I've got a slide presentation. I'm going to fire through it. It is available to everybody, as well as um, a longer document, which we can distribute, and our website, of course. <clears throat> but this story begins um, a little bit more than two years ago, when the County of Simcoe funded us small group to do a feasibility study, taking a look at if uh, a global geopark made sense for the region of Georgian Bay. And after six months, we came back and recommended that in, in fact, it was a great opportunity, but the opportunity was for the entirety of Georgian Bay. And, uh, and what's more, that we thought it should be best done through a grassroots effort uh, to get it to a point where we would bring it back to municipalities and other stakeholders um, when it was at a point of uh, maturity or uh, the state of building um, where we could then start to re-engage with, with municipalities. So that's why I'm here today to start that conversation with uh, Tay Township. And uh, I'm gonna try and fire this up with any luck it will work. So if I'm allowed to share my screen, can I do that? Let's see. You can you see that? that? Yes, we can see it's starting to share. Yep, there we okay. go. Miracles never cease. All right. Um, so uh, I just, um, by way of introduction, uh, global geoparks are uh, a, a UNESCO, that's the United Nations Education, Science and Culture Organization uh, uh, initiative that is now almost 20 years old. And what they do is identify uh, places around the world where the geological landscapes are of genuine international significance. There are now um, almost 247 countries, and the intention of these is to showcase these extraordinary places, <clears throat> do research, connect to the cultures and history of those communities, um, and to help uh, both promote sustainable development, but also to protect these incredibly important areas. There are five in Canada. The Bay of Fundy is cited there. Um, Georgian Bay, no surprise to anybody in this meeting, is an extraordinary place. And we're an aspiring geopark because UNESCO immediately recognized how unique the geological narratives are for Georgian Bay and all of its incredible variety, starting with the North Channel, which is 2.5 billion years old, and down to the region of uh, North Simcoe, uh, which has an extraordinary story of its own. But the thing that UNESCO also says is that 
uh, landscapes and geology have a direct bearing on, on culture and history of places. And that's why Georgian Bay is also a fantastic uh, um, candidate for this kind of UNESCO honor. Um, you, you can imagine how Georgian Bay has influenced such a great history, 12,000 years of indigenous history, an amazing story of Canada's crossroads through trade, settlement, um, the amazing art and creativity that it spawned. And, and your region is an incredible demonstration of all of that. The scale of the Georgian Bay Geopark will be 48,000 square kilometers. The bay is included. But the beauty is that there are a seven distinct stories, each of them with a geological difference and also a historical difference. So think of the Georgian Bay story as having seven chapters, the eighth chapter being the lake itself. The underpinnings of the geopark will be what we call geosites. And these are places that represent the remarkable geological story, but also include um, those historical cultural stories. So for example, in, in your municipality, the amazing groundwater story, both the site and that story, would be an incredibly important uh, uh, geosite. And these things would help with education, um, the experience people have that are visitors or citizens, as well as research. So what do these geoparks do that are really beneficial? It comes really in six areas. Research, where we try to create Georgian Bay-wide research that complements the efforts of others. Education, we've already created eight modules that represent each of the regions, and these are now available to um, post-secondary and soon um, uh, high school and grade schools to teach them about the wonders of Georgian Bay. And then reconciliation, which I know is an often expressed term, but uh, the UN really emphasizes the importance of partnership with Indigenous People, First Nations, and Métis in our case. And indeed, there are 41 First Nations around Georgian Bay, as you would know. Um, also, what uh, this allows is for the, uh, the use of technology, where a website and an app are going to be an incredibly um, useful way to engage people, to engage uh, regions and the like. Geotourism, which is tourism that really respects the area that involves the community in, in tourism, <clears throat> is an important component of this because it brings economic benefit. And then there's the storytelling, and we've developed a great storytelling platform around the idea of deep time. From an Indigenous perspective, uh, the Deputy Mayor of Midland was um, on our Board of Directors, Jack Conton, whom you would know who of course tragically passed away in November, but he has uh, opened um, the, the different ways that we are engaging with uh, First Nations and Métis using what we're now calling the Jack Conton Framework, which is a consultation protocol. Um, and uh, I'd also say too, that it's critical that this is community-based, that um, every region of Georgian Bay needs to not only buy into it, but see the benefits and get involved. And to date, we have been now starting the pro, uh, well into the process of talking to <clears throat> municipalities, mayors, and so on. And we've had a very strong support from Perry Sound, uh, Killarney, Clearview, Penetanguishene, Collingwood, Midland to date. We just had a very good meeting, the Economic Development Officer of Simcoe just last week. So um, we are hoping, of course, for comprehensive support from all communities across the Bay. Um, so in a nutshell, what, what does a geopark bring to any region that's participating? From UNESCO's point of view in the history around the world is that it helps uh, communities uh, achieve their goals and their priorities in building resilience and sustainability. And goodness knows, we know that there are, uh, there are going to be 10 million people on the doorstep of Georgian Bay by the mid-40s. So this is a means by which communities can better manage that. It does drive deeper knowledge of uh, the environment, the culture, the dynamics uh, that can help uh, manage climate change and, and uh, the pressures of, of growth. Um, and then also importantly, every region has something new to be genuinely proud of, uh, that this story of unique culture, landscape and geology is unique in every region and your township is part of an incredible story. So public engagement and understanding 
that deepen people's respect for a place. And it does give us real opportunities to develop concrete uh, collaborations with uh, indigenous peoples. So uh, from our po the point of view of, of uh, the Tay Township, we see this as a fantastic opportunity to essentially be a gateway and showcase of the Georgian Bay Geopark. You're brilliantly situated, as you know. Um, it provides a um, the opportunity to enhance your already strong regional story and positioning. Um, it, it provides opportunities around conservation-oriented tourism. We've just uh, submitted a very um, complete uh, geotourism strategy to the Tourism Growth Fund, which we'd be glad to share with you. There are wonderful education and research opportunities that can provide uh, data, insight, and information to the municipality and to other players within the region to uh, equip them for managing growth and pressures, and then ultimately pride and public engagement. So what we are hoping today, and I know this is a, a quick trip over a long stretch, um, and I'll send you further information, but our ask is that we get the chance to follow up with you and that we ultimately uh, can agree on a letter of support, which is an important component as we look to desig uh, applying for designation with UNESCO over the next couple of years, and to ultimately discuss plans for 2024 and 2025 about how the geopark can integrate with your own priorities and interests. So that's it. We we are two years into it. We have uh, we are going to apply the first stage uh, for the designation next year. It will take a couple of years after that. But I want to emphasize that the benefits of the geopark are already starting to land. So thank you very much for your time, and I'd love to answer any questions or get some feedback. And I'll stop sharing here. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Pickett. Uh, very, uh, very interesting. And uh, uh, <clears throat> for sure, we all know Jack Conton very well and uh, know how dedicated he was to this uh, to this project. Council, uh, any questions or comments? Not seeing any at this point. Um, so you will be following up, uh, you indicated, uh, with uh, some more information for us. Yes. Uh, and I suppose you're also, uh, you're hitting Tiny and uh, Georgian Bay Township and all the local municipalities. Yes, and we're going to, um, we are doing so. We're also meeting um, with the, the Minister of the Environment and, uh, and Parks, um, we've we've got strong support from Parks Canada and Ontario Parks, for example, um, and uh, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Uh, we're going to be meeting with as well. Okay. Clearly, there are many many municipalities, so we we want all of them to get behind this, and we're we're really in the outreach phase right now, Mayor Walker. Okay, that's uh, that's great. Thanks very much for taking yeah. time to share with us today, and we look forward to uh, further uh, uh, conversations and communications with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Council, that brings us to uh, Protective and Development Services. And uh, uh, as such, I'm going to turn it over to our chair, uh, Deputy Mayor Norris. Deputy Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Your Worship. Welcome, everyone. Item number 5.1, it's uh, PDS 2024-13. A uh, request from the owners of 322 William Street with the uh, request to Victoria Harbor Wastewater Treatment Plan. Uh, the staff recommendation that item PDS 2024-13 dated March 13th, 2024 regarding a request from the owners of 322 William Street related to the Victoria Harbor Wastewater Treatment Plan upgrade be received and that their request to approve the installation of holding tanks or a private septic system prior to the completion of the Victoria Harbor Wastewater Treatment Plant expansion be denied. So I have it moved by Councillor Bumstead, seconded by Councillor Talbot. So I'll turn to Mr. Weatherall for further comments. Mr. Weatherall. Uh, thank you, Chair Norris. Uh, no further comments. Uh, planning report is self-explanatory re relating to planning policies and the installation of private septic systems on properties that fall in with inside the settlement area. 
but happy to answer any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. So I'll open uh, questions up to council. Mayor Walker. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Just uh, to Todd, um, um, I, I certainly understand the the report and the uh, planning implications. Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, if our schedule for the uh, sewage uh, treatment plant expansion does, doesn't uh, pan out. So uh, if we start looking at two or three years, um, would there be a path we could follow to consider this type of thing through planning amendment or uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, thank you, Worship. <clears throat> I haven't looked into the logistics of it, but obviously the only option that would probably be available would probably be a temporary uh, zoning bylaw amendment, uh, which again, because planning staff would not be able to support a zoning change in general because it doesn't meet planning policies. Um, that being said, time frame to move forward, having a temporary use bylaw, um, site, or site plan agreements put in place, securities received, uh, registration of these agreements on title, you're looking at, you know, probably a year before that happens anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then having the applicant submit securities, uh, even when, if this is allowed and the septic system is placed on the property, it could be a potential nightmare for staff following up with these gentlemen or these homeowners to have the septic systems removed. Um, as you know, we went through a bit of an issue with the water services in the Grandview Beach Paradise Point area once that was installed. So, and having them connect after. So uh, it could lead down a, a slippery slope here by allowing a couple of these property owners that want to have a septic system prior to the plant upgrade. Um, that being said, I know myself, I've had a discussion with Mr. Barrio and our chief building official. There hasn't been a lot of inquiries on these um, within the settlement of Victoria Harbor. So uh, it's not like people are, you know, knocking down the doors to put one of these on their properties and prior to the plan upgrade. Okay, thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Weather. I, I know that there, there's, to my mind, I think there's been two to date, and I, I just wonder if that might increase as uh, people realize um, where we are. So hopefully, uh, we can get the uh, plant done as quickly as possible, and won't be, a, won't be a, an issue. Uh, Councillor Raymond, please. Thank you through the chair. Um, my apologies for not putting the card up sooner. It seems to me there was a legislative component that uh, does not allow for septics. Uh, if uh, it's a serviced area, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Barrio and perhaps I misunderstood, but um, I'm just wondering if this is something else that sh should also be looked at if council is ever going to approve uh, septic in uh, a settlement area that's serviced. So just food for thought. Thank you, Your Worship. Thanks, Councillor Raymond. So just a question. Oh, Councillor Lashpel, sorry. Yeah, through the chair, I, I'd be a little bit leery. And I, I guess the issue is go back to, um, as Mr. Manager said, how many do we potentially end up with? I mean, I think it's best to wait to see what direction we do with the sewage plant and the expansion. Uh, I think once we do one or two, we set the precedence for four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Who knows? And until we get some clarity of of the sewage plant, I, I it's best that we remain status quo and not allow it. To, uh, and let's see what the future brings. Thank you. Okay, not seeing any other questions, but I do have a couple, a couple of comments. So just to you, Todd, I know the uh, the provincial policy and the uh, Golden Horseshoe recommends this not be going through, um, and even our planning. But I guess the my whole thing within the uh, building uh, code, it does allow a, a temporary use where certain situations turn around and uh, warrant them. The question being... What happens if we do go against the uh, policies? What's down the road? It doesn't spell it out within the PBS because obviously it never really happened. So, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, planning staff would not be able to support an application to do it. Um, so, if Council decides on 
uh, approving a temporary provision to allow septic systems that, you know, obviously opens the door for appeals. Um, that being said, Jason can comment on whether or not he had issue a permit or not, but obviously planning staff under the PPS and the growth plan, we can't support any type of application to allow for private septic services inside the settlement area that has services available. Uh, PPS is pretty, pretty vocal on allowing only for rounding out of settlement areas or infilling. So the situations where 322 is uh, applied is not one of those situations. So again, it, it would be difficult for planning staff to provide any type of support on an application. So because these property owners, well, maybe just to clarify, <laughs> or you can clarify for me, they already have the zoning in place for, for a structure? So just some background on 322 William Street. Uh, we've had discussion with this homeowner probably in the last two years. Uh, their goal was to sever the property and build a retirement home on it. Since day one, we've advised them that the plant was at capacity and they would not wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed to build. Um, so they already had a dwelling on the property. They just went through a severance process to create a, a new lot. So, um, you know, they're well aware that this has been on hold for a while. I, I know that I understand their frustration that it's going to probably take longer than they expected, but it, it is what it is. Um, and again, other than the other person that supplied or that has put comments in to allow for it, uh, these lots have sat vacant for many years. So. I'm not sure what the uh, rush is now. Okay. And maybe, uh, Jason, maybe you can elaborate a bit on the, uh, when the uh, temporary system is allowed according to the building code. Thank you, through the Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, as per 8812, it's, it's where the acceptable installations are allowed through the building code. Um, in a nutshell, without reading the entire article, uh, basically it's, it's used for temporary operation, uh, not for recreational use, and it's not to exceed 12 months. Um, it's used for uh, remedying an, an unsafe situation where we need to throw a holding tank in to catch the sewage while the, new, the septic system is repaired. Uh, it's also used for where the lot size is not big enough to hold a class four system, then they would allow a class five holding tank. Other than that, um, it, it's not allowed under the building code unless it, it's uh, an agreement with the municipality and there's a called sewage system um, sign maintenance agreement to ensure that it's pumped out. Okay, thanks, Jace. Maybe I'll throw one at uh, Mr. Barrio, and that's uh, just to do with the wastewater treatment plant. I know we were at, we were at 128%. I think the uh, numbers I did see, there's a decline. I guess the question being, if there was a continued continuance and a decline in how much we're treating, would we reconsider opening this up to certain uh, development, uh, just being the... Uh, the houses are not a full uh, full scale subdivision. The question is, are we going to, by it being a dry season, get below the hundred percent capacity? I, I'm so not that's sure. What that's what it's based on, then. Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing, I guess I, I struggle with it. I'd rather see us uh, on a temporary, but I think as Jason's indicated, basically we only allow these in emergency situations uh, and they will go. Um, I guess the, the best plan ahead is hopefully we can get this wastewater plant up and running and uh, get going. So there is a motion on the floor, so I'm not seeing... Any amendments? So all those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you, Todd. So the next one up, 5.2, uh, PDS 2024-15, uh, the recommendation that uh, 
dated uh, item PDS 2024-15, dated March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly activity report planning be received. So I have a move by Councillor Latchpel, seconded by Councillor Raymond. Uh, Todd, anything further to add to your report? Thank you, Chair. Nothing further to add. Okay. Questions from the floor? I'm not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, 5.3, the recommendation that item PDS 2024-14 dated March 13, 2024 regarding the monthly activity report building service division be received. I have it moved by Mayor Walker, seconded by Councillor Bumstead. Um, Jason, anything further to add to your report? Thank you, Chair. Nothing further to add. Questions from the floor? Not seeing any. Just my quick comment. Uh, looks like we're getting a, a great start to the year. Uh, let's see, there is 30 uh, building permits already out and four new houses, so that's good to see. So all those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, next, 5.4, the recommendation that item PDS 2024-18, dated March 13, 2024, regarding the MLEO monthly activity report be received. And welcome, Emily. Uh, anything further to add to your report? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, nothing further to add. Uh, however, if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer those. Great. Thanks, Emily. Um, I guess actually I need a mover and a seconder first. So it'd be moved by Council Councillor Talbot, second by Councillor Lashpel. So we got that all straightened out. So uh, questions from the floor. Oh, Councillor Talbot. Thank you through the chair, just to Ms. King. Um <clears throat> I just uh, <clears throat> excuse me, wanted to comment on how the school the you know since they've painted it and got rid of the graffiti there's um, a lot of comments going around and that they're all positive of course nobody likes to see the that um, building disgraced the way it was so i thank you for uh, moving forward with that thank you thank you councillor talbot so all those in favor, not seeing any other questions, and that is carried. Uh, next up, 5.5, .5, the recommendation that item PDS 2024-17, dated March 17, 2024, regarding the Deputy Fire Chief Fire Prevention Officer monthly activity report be received. So I have it moved by Councillor Raymond, seconded by Mayor Walker. Uh, Mr. Moore, anything further to add to your report? Thank you, Chair. I have nothing further to add. Okay, open it up for questions. Council? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, 5.6. Um, Recommendation that item PDS 2024-16 dated March 13, 2024 regarding the monthly activity report. The general manager, fire chief, CEMC, be received. I have a move by Councillor Bumstead, seconded by Councillor Talbot. Uh, chief, anything further to add to your report? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Nothing further to add. Okay, I'll open it to the floor. Councillor Talbot. Thank you, through the chair. I just wanted to uh, mention, Chief Amer, in your report, there was a number, again, of uh, medical calls that you uh, uh, attended. I mean, I'm not sure if, you know, the public or people are aware of, you know, that additional component that you have to your workload. So um, I think it was 14. I don't have it in front of me, but um, quite a number within a month. And again, would those be related to um, like overdoses or is it related to cardiac arrest? And if, who gets there first? Is it you, the ambulance, the police? Thank if you, you could chair. just uh, know. We had 12 medical calls in, okay. in February. It's all over the board. Um, 
bit of everything you mentioned there. And what happens typically in Tay Township, 75% uh, of the time we are there ahead of ambulance. Okay. So they do keep quite detailed stats and they let us know that. Um, yeah, anything from cardiac arrest, uh, we do unfortunately do see the overdoses in our community now. And um, that ratio would be 20 to 30 percent of those calls. Yeah. Would would the overdoses be more like fentanyl? Mm, through the chair. Um, yes, definitely fentanyl's here. Unfortunately, there's a couple of more exotic drugs in the area now, too, uh, okay. that we've been warned of by our uh, medical director and the Ministry of Health. So what would, uh, like, I have I have no idea, Chief, <laughs> what those would be. So yeah. do you mind sharing? Well, one of them, unfortunately, is a uh, an elephant tranquilizer. So oh, people wow. have found ways to inject that into themselves. And unfortunately, Narcan doesn't reverse the effects. So um, typically, that's a negative outcome. So. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just that I know there's been some discussion, not that I go on Facebook, but, um, you know, there's my, you know, some members of, like, people I know, they do. and mm -hmm. But they mention about... Um, uh you know all the needles and stuff that's around down at the slip so i know that's not our property but the point being is with that there i mean it's quite uh evident that the you know the drug use is quite strong unfortunately that's correct anyway i thank you for that um for all your information that you provided thank you thanks councillor talbot councillor lash pal yeah, through the chair to Mr. Amer, this is a, nothing really in his report, but I have a couple of questions of Mr. Amer. And in regards to the status of the airboat uh, purchase, um, and I look over some information, I've done a little research, and, and what I found, uh, Mr. Amer, that we're talking $700,000, but what I'm understanding now, things have changed um, as far as the product, but I think at some point we need an update I do anyway, so where 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 are we are with that? If there is a change in the boat, why is there a change, and what are we accepting? Um, as I said, I can't seem to get a definite answer. And the other thing is too, I'd like to know. Uh, they did do a presentation to the municipality. I'd be curious how how many other municipalities besides ourselves got involved with supporting this uh, cause and project. Um, I'd be curious to say what what the other local ones like Mill and Pentang. If they accepted or declined uh, the offer. So more of an information uh, package, uh, Mr. Amy, in regards to the status. And I, I'd be really curious about this boat as, as far as what we're getting now as opposed to what was originally proposed. Thank you. So if you don't mind through the chair, I could answer some of those questions. Again, it's the airboat committee is an arm length, so I don't get regular updates, but I do have some answers for you. The boat originally, as everyone's aware, was supposedly to come from Russia and obviously with uh, world events now that's not going to happen. There happens to be a manufacturer in Muskoka that builds a similar craft that just a little smaller so they're going to end up at some point building the larger craft and they're in the midst of right now building one similar size as a trial. Uh, so the numbers that you had stated 700,000 yes at one point that was the thought if it had to come from Russia with the taxes and tariffs. So I think the numbers back down to their original number in that three hundred and fifty thousand dollar range with the equipment and such. Um, and his worship did ask at the last or previous council meeting about how um, the delegations, the other municipalities went. I know that uh, the only one I, I'm aware of. I know the other ones in Midland. They did. There was no ask at the end of the Midland. It ended up being simply an information session. And then the uh, council sessions in Penetang, and I'm not even sure they made it to Tiny. But I I'm, I'm guarantee you that nobody had to put in money at that point. Did that cover your two main questions? It, it just a follow up uh, through the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just in regards to that, and I recognize um, a local person, but I I'd be curious uh, at some point comparing specs of what the original. I understand about the tariffs and whatnot, but I, I'd be cautious and be, and be curious, make sure that. You know, we're getting a, a product that's equivalent to what we asked for and that there is no cutbacks, whatever. Mind you, I like the idea of 300 some thousand as opposed to 750 for 20 years down the road when we get the notice that, oh, this insurance won't cover this anymore. We got to go buy a new one. It's a lot cheaper type thing. So, but uh, 
I, I think uh, I just need to confirm actually what it what, what the status what we're at. Thank you. Through the chair, just one last one, just for your own comfort level. The actual bottom of the boat that we are buying from Russia, and the one that this person uses, is identical. It comes from Ukraine, and the actual manufacturer is a Ukrainian, so he's immigrated here. But prior to any purchase, we'll uh, I'll let that group know that we'd like to see the specs. Thanks, Chief. You're good, Council Ashpel. Mayor Walker. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor. Just on that, I, I I'm I'm sure that we had a presentation at Council about the uh, difference in the in the boats. Did we not? Through the chair, I don't know if it was a complete and uh, detailed difference spec for spec, but they did mention that now the boat would be coming locally versus from Russia. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Great. Thanks. And maybe I'll just jump into a couple of comments here. I was in to see the chief yesterday. Chief, uh, in the report, we did have a water rescue. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting when uh, you described how, how the events unfolded. I was just wondering if you can enlighten uh, Council on that. Uh, I guess my whole beef here is what part don't people understand? Stay the hell off the ice. Um, Georgian Bay had, I believe it was two rescues last week. Um, Blake Simcoe had a couple. <laughs> so it, it blows me out of the water when people have to venture out onto the ice. But Chief, I just thought uh, we did have uh, one water rescue. I was just wondering if you can bring uh, Council up to date as to what actually happened. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In this particular instance, the caller had been observing an ATV out on the ice. I think he got distracted or moved away from his window for a moment. So when he returned, uh, the ATV was no longer in front of his residence. And in fact, he thought he saw a hole in the ice. So he did the right thing and he called emergency services. We arrived on scene, deployed our pass, which is our drone because it was the fastest object to get out there as we got our team ready and were able to identify before the team even entered uh, onto the ice that there in fact was no hole. We were able to land the drone on what was the hole. So we were able to prove that it wasn't. It was just a difference in the color of uh, the ice versus the ice around it. And the fact that the ATV was no longer there. This was in early February, obviously any time around now you wouldn't find that. And just to add to that, we also did chase a kayak down through uh, Sturgeon Bay the other day to ensure there was nobody in the water around it. So we also were able to deploy our, our pass in that instance as well. So it's become quite valuable in the fact that we're not putting firefighters at risk before checking things out. So we're able to do a grid pattern and confirm no ways there. Once uh, some of the neighbors saw the commotion of several emergency service vehicles in the area, they did come out and identify the kayak as their own and uh, reported that everybody was safe and sound inside the cottage. So. Appreciate it, Chief. And I guess just the follow up to this, um, at least we didn't endanger our fighter fight our fire fighters. Uh, I know I was reading uh, up in Georgian Bay, they sent four out onto the ice. Uh, those individuals actually went through themselves. So here they're jeopardizing them or their lives to rescue somebody that shouldn't have been even been out on the ice. So I guess that's. Uh, Great work, Chief. Uh, you know, it's it's great that we're utilizing, uh, you know, the drone that uh, just goes to prove that uh, we made the right choice when you did bring that forth uh, a few a few years ago about getting the drones. Other than that, um, I know there was a mutual aid. Uh, hopefully not everybody's sitting back with us uh, just to tap on to Councillor LaChapelle's uh, thought here just because we offer mutual aid and everything else. Uh, this fireboat won't be uh, automatically thought this is mutual aid. So just my comment. So seeing no other questions, all those in favor. And that is carried. Your Worship, that concludes my segment of the uh, agenda. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um... Moving right along, we uh, now have uh, item six on our agenda, operational services, staff reports. And as uh, such, I'll turn it over to our chair, Councillor Talbot. Councillor Talbot. You. Thank Lord you, Mayor. Chair. 
Thank you, Mayor Walker. So I'll start with 6.1 OS 2024-11, uh, Manager of Parks, Rec, and Facility Services re-monthly activity report be received. Mr. Anderson, do you have anything to add or elaborate on? Through the chair, uh, nothing to add to the report, but happy to answer any questions council may have. All right, thank you. So I have, uh, sorry, I'm Councillor Bumstead La Chapelle. Um, any questions for Mr. Anderson? No? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. And uh, moving on to 6.2 OS 2 or 2024 12, uh, Manager Roads and Fleet Services re monthly activity report be received. I have Councillor Ray Raymond moving it, second Deputy Mayor Norris. Any questions for um, Rick or Mr. Wayne? No? Okay. Um, I could ask for uh, all in favor. Thank you. And moving right along, we're moving on to uh, 6.3, the item uh, OS 2024-13, dated March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly acti activity report for the general manager operational services be received. I have Councillor Bumstead, Moving second, Councillor LaChapelle and Mr. Berrio, do you have anything you'd like to share, elaborate on with Council? Nope. nope, happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions for uh, Manager or GM Berrio? Deputy Mayor Norris? Thank you, uh, Councillor Taylor. It was just a quick one. Uh, Sean, how many, uh, with the mandatory uh, site uh, meeting on uh, March the 7th, how many uh, contractors were actually there? We had about 30 people and nine true different contractors. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for GM Burial? No, seeing none. I just have one. Um, what about 9th Ave? Any dates uh, set for that? Yep, 9th, 9th Avenue, Water Main Works. We're waiting for locates. The um, Our subcontractor is doing some exploration with our back truck also to find utilities, and it should start in the next two weeks. We'll get notices out once we firm up when the uh, work will start. Okay, thank you. I'm sure there's going to be so many happy people on that street. They never just one, they, sorry, they, just one more. The The road work will start May 1st after our half loads is off. Okay, but I mean, they, they've waited so long and never thought anything would happen. So um, everything comes in time, I guess. But uh, thank you very much. Um, seeing no further questions for GM Barrio, all those in favor? Thank you. That's carried. And Mayor Walker, back to you. Thank you, Councillor Talbot. Uh, that brings us to item seven, corporate services. And for that, I will turn the uh, floor over to uh, Councillor LaChapelle. Councillor LaChapelle, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Moving on to item 7.1. Yeah. I have a recommendation that is moved by Councillor Talbot and seconded by Councillor Bumstead. That item is CS 2024-29, dated March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly activity report, Clarkstreet Department be received. And I'm assuming maybe if any questions are present, Lacey will answer to it. So do I have any questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. 7.2. I have a recommendation that is moved by Deputy Mayor Norris, second by Your Worship Mayor Walker. The item CS 2024-30 dated March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly active report for the manager of communication and technology be received. Anything further to add to this? Elizabeth, nothing? Nothing further to add, thank you. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. Move on to item 7.3. I have a recommendation that is moved by Councillor Raymond, seconded by Mayor Walker. 
The item CS 2024-31 data March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly active report, human resources be reserved. And Lindsay, anything further to add to this? Thank you, nothing further. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. 7.4, I have a recommendation that's moved by Deputy Mayor Norris, seconded by Councillor Talbot, that item CS 2024-32 dated March 13, 2024, regarding the financial service monthly activity report be received. Amy, anything further to add to this? Nothing further to add. Questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. Last item, 7.5. I have a recommendation that's moved by Councillor Bumstead, seconded by Councillor Raymond, that item CS 2024-33, dated March 13, 2024, regarding the monthly activity report for the Chief Administrative Officer be received. Anything further to add? Thank you, Chair Lashapal. Nothing further, but here if there's any questions. Any questions, comments? Deputy Mayor Norris. Thank you, Council Ashpal. And just the one, uh, it may be worthwhile just to inform uh, Council the insur insurance pooling, uh, the re review of the results of the feasibility study. And I believe this is from the uh, county. I'm not sure if you can just kind of inform uh, Council as to what that's all about. Yeah. Thank you, through Chair Lashapal. Okay for sound. Yes. Um, the the county had uh, reached out. I guess actually it was started by the township of Springwater had requested whether uh, the municipalities would be interested in looking at the possibility of insurance pooling. So that is something that there was interest and participation from all the municipalities, lower tiers as well as the county of Simcoe and the city of Aurelia. That information went out to a third party who did a review and uh, has since come back and said the results were very favorable for uh, potentially looking at an insurance pool. So the direction uh, as we left it at our last meeting was that a report would be brought forward to County Council uh, because that's where it was kind of initiated. Um, and then uh, provided that County Council is in agreement with moving forward, then each of the lower tiers can bring that uh, further information to their councils um, requesting um, whether there's interest in moving forward with that process. But certainly, uh, from my understanding, normally you don't kind of see a financial benefit until any five or further years out. And in our case, it would be almost immediate. So the, uh, the third party who did the review was um, pretty impressed at seeing those numbers and not something that they regularly have seen. So that further information will be brought forward as it becomes available, but certainly good news at this point. Anything further? Follow up, Deputy Mayor? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Andrea. That's great. Uh, the only other comment I have, and uh, you can pass it on to your staff. All these reports that we received today were just uh, phenomenal. And then I'll go back to even uh, more or less saying the uh, the email we received yesterday uh, uh, Tay in review. That was well done. Excellent. So hats off to all staff on that, and I'm sure it'll be going out to the general public shortly here. So I think it was just a council, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but uh, well done. Thank you. Yeah, just for council. Any other further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried. Now, Your Worship, I turn this back to you. My segment is over. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor LaChapelle. That brings us to item eight, other business. Uh, do we have no other business listed for discussions or do we have any items for information? That's uh, agenda item nine. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Madam CAO, uh, under other business. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. There were four items that were added uh, yesterday to the agenda um, and were provided to Council um, 
yesterday afternoon. So the first two items were uh, follow-ups to the report that was reviewed earlier today, 2024-13. The one uh, correspondence was from the owners of 322 William and the other being from 32 Bourgeois Beach Road and 585 O'Leary Lane, owning both of those properties. So right. those were the first two pieces of correspondence. I, um, I, I think we're okay there with... Uh... The explanation given by uh, Mr. Barrio and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Weatherall. Okay, and then the third piece of con uh, correspondence, eight point three, was the letter from Float Homes, um, not Vessels Coalition, refloated containers, and they were requesting that the township participate in the working group starting yes. end of March. Yes, Council. This is. Uh... A working group that's been established to um, for three levels of government um, to discuss uh, an approach to the floating containers. So uh, locally, we have uh, Township of Georgian Bay involved, and also the Township of Severn. Uh, so they contact uh, contacted me to see if the township would be interested in in um, being a part of this. Uh, I did confirm that there would be no financial obligation and the committee will probably meet um, over the next uh, couple of months uh, just to discuss uh, a plan of attack and um, in the case of Severn and Georgian Bay the representative of, is the CAO so um, I think it would probably be a good idea to be involved and what if it's not the CAO then perhaps uh, she may have a member of staff that uh, that could attend. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, council was okay with that. Okay, I'm seeing uh, lots of yeses and uh, thank you, Madam CEO. And the fourth item was? <laughs> thank you, Your Worship. The fourth item was uh, going to be a verbal report from yourself regarding the Simcoe County Municipal Fund Spiel happening on April 4th from nine to four at the Stainer Curling Club. Right, so um, the, the, there's a, uh, information out there or if not it'll come just if if there's any interest uh, to uh form a team for curling and uh go from there uh council at bell yes true Your worship i thought the mayor would be nominating and suggested that councillor norris and i bring our skills again with you too as curling bondsville so i i know we performed quite well last time we had it uh so i was waiting for the, you to throw us into the ring but yeah. I'd be I'd be more than happy to participate if they wish to do something like that again, especially if Councilor Norris is I mean Deputy Mayor Norris is part of it because man the skills he brought to the table that day were phenomenal so I'd be interested. Okay, so we can uh, just uh, let Andrea know, and uh, we will go from there. Uh, Deputy Mayor Norris, did you have something to say? Well, other than your worship, I think we need to defend our. Uh our status here we i think the last i heard we were looking for an alternate to step in uh somebody uh, but then once you we were able to get the whatever you called it that aid uh, that uh, individual seemed to be doing a little better so <laughs> i think definitely we enter a team um i'm more than up for it uh, by the sounds of it councillor la chapelle is so we got two I'm not sure if you can head us up, uh, Your Worship, but uh, just leaves uh, maybe one or two vacancies here. So I would definitely suggest we enter a team to defend our our honor. All right, sounds good. So we'll get something together and uh, defend our championship. Okay. Um... Thank you, Madam CAO, for bringing those to my attention. I would have went right over those babies. So um, now we are at um, general discussion. I, well, we have the delegation follow-up, but we know where we're going there. We're waiting for more information. And then number item 11 is general discussion. Uh, committee, staff, anyone has anything they would like to ask or suggest or discuss? Not seeing anything at this point. So um, we do have uh, an in-camera session, closed session. 
So um, if I could have a mover and seconder to the following resolution, that council retire to a closed session at 10.02 a.m. under authority of Municipal Act Section 239, sub 2, sub b, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Uh, all in uh, Councilor uh, Lachapelle and Deputy Mayor Norris, mover and seconder, all in favor. That's carried. So uh, we will take um, a brief recess until 10 after 10 so the staff can uh, set up.